in Psalms chapter 77 and verse 13, we are told, Thy way, O God, is in the sanctuary. Who is so great a God as our God? Well, this verse tells us that if you want to learn more about God's ways, if you want to learn more about God, we are to look in the sanctuary. That's what the Bible said. Well, how many divine beings does the sanctuary tell us there is? If you remember the earthly sanctuary, the service of the earthly sanctuary was divided into three parts. The most holy place, the holy place, and the courtyard. In this study, we are going to look at each one of them individually to see what we can learn, to see how many divine beings we can find in the sanctuary. Remember, the earthly sanctuary was made according to the pattern that was shown to Moses, according to the heavenly sanctuary that was shown to Moses. So whatever we learn in the earthly sanctuary, we can safely conclude that applies to the heavenly sanctuary. We will begin with the most holy place. What lessons can we learn from the most holy place? How many divine beings do we find in the most holy place? Well, the first thing is we find God's presence dwelling on the top of the mercy seat. We read about that in Exodus chapter 25, verse 21 and 22. The Bible tells us, And thou shalt put the mercy seat above upon the ark, and in the ark thou shalt put the testimony that I shall give thee. And there I will meet with thee, and I will commune with thee from above the mercy seat, from between the two cherubims, which are upon the ark of the testimony, of all things which I will give thee in commandment unto the children of Israel. In these verses we read that God's presence was manifested on top of the mercy seat. You can also look at Psalms chapter 80 and verse 1. Now God's presence in the earthly sanctuary represented God the Father, who is the one sitting on the throne in the heavenly sanctuary above. We read about that in Revelation chapter 4 and verse 2. And immediately I was in the Spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. And in verse 3 we read, And he that sat was to look upon like a jasper and a sardine stone, and there was a rainbow round about the throne, in sight like unto an emerald. As you can see, the Bible tells us in Revelation chapter 4, verses 2 and 3, that one sat upon the throne. Yes, that word one is added, but in verse 3 we are told, and he that sat was to look. He is singular. Only one being is sitting on the throne, and that is God the Father. Now, how do we know that? Are we just assuming that it is God the Father? Are we just assuming that it is only one being? Not at all. If we keep reading chapter 4, and when we get to chapter 5, especially chapter 5 of Revelation, verses 6 and 7, we read, And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne, and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders, stood a lamb, as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God, sent forth into all the earth. And he, that is the lamb, came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. Here we see very plainly and very clearly that there is a throne, one sitting on the throne, there is the twenty-four elders and the four beasts, and there is one, a lamb, as if it had been slain before the throne, in the midst of the throne. And then we read that that lamb, which is Jesus, as John the Baptist said, the Lamb of God taketh away the sin of the world. We see this Lamb coming and taking the book out of the right hand of Him that sat upon the throne. Very clear, very easy to understand. Jesus, standing before the throne, comes to the Father who is sitting on the throne and takes the book out of His right hand. Very beautiful verses. But the point is, the first heavenly being that we come across in the most holy place in the earthly and hence in the heavenly sanctuary is God the Father, represented by the glory that is manifested on top of the mercy seat. The second being that we come across in the most holy place of the earthly sanctuary is the high priest. 
If you remember, God gave strict instructions that only the high priest once a year would enter into the most holy place in the presence of God. We read about that in Hebrews chapter 9 verses 6 and 7. The Bible tells us, Now when these things were thus ordained, the priests went always into the first tabernacle, accomplishing the service of God. But into the second went the high priest alone once every year, not without blood which he offered for himself and for the errors of the people. Here we can clearly see that only the high priest was allowed to enter once a year into the most holy place. Of course, we all know that the high priest of the earthly sanctuary is a symbol or represents our heavenly high priest, Jesus, as we are told in Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 14, where we read, Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. You can also see Hebrews chapter 5 verse 10 and chapter 6 verse 20. That is Hebrews chapter 5 verse 10 and chapter 6 verse 20. So the second heavenly being we come across in the most holy place is Jesus Christ our Lord. The most holy place, the earthly most holy place and hence the heavenly most holy place teach us the existence of only two heavenly beings. That is God the Father represented or symbolized by the glory, the Shekinah that appeared above the mercy seat and Jesus Christ the Son of God who is represented by the high priest who entered once a year in the most holy place.